Oh, um, we've seen yet another national disaster. We've seen yet another trouble. Mr. Segui, your initial comments on that. Well, uh, <coughs> thank you very much. Let me say good evening to our viewers. And having said that, use the opportunity to also extend my condolences to the bereaved, bereaved families and um, the management of uh, the Melcom group of companies. Um, we woke up this morning, I mean, having to look at life just as we normally would see it, hoping that we're beginning the day, you know, when the news broke out that this disaster, you know, had affected uh, the Melcom company with regards to their store building at uh, Achimota. I believe we've seen what has happened, um, the way um, the president himself had to cut short his uh, tour um, in the Upper East region. His vice also rushing to the place after he had returned from Takrade, Sekendi Takrade. And uh, our running mate as well, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, who also visited the um, disaster site. And our presidential candidate, Nana Adudankwa Kufado, who sent a word of condolence from far away Volta region. I think that um, it sent a signal that in times like this, uh, despite our political, you know, differences, we come together as Ghanaians and see problems that confront us like this as one people. And I believe, even though it is quite a very difficult one for the, I mean, those families that have lost um, family members, uh, we pray that the good Lord would grant them peace in their hearts. Okay. Uh, Mr. Asante Abba. Uh, my brother, I think it's uh, sad to, uh, to get some of this information, especially when I heard it for the first time in the morning, I was a bit sad that uh, such an issue should, should happen to this country at this moment in time. Indeed, uh, it is worth mentioning that things like disaster, diseases, accidents, and all manner of things, some of these things are no respect of persons or individuals or companies or countries. It is really sad that such a thing has happened and we have people losing their life. At the moment, we, we have been told that uh, at least about one or two individuals have, have, have passed on to the other side of the world. And we have a couple of them to about uh, 34, 42 num of them who have been also been rescued by the team and they are alive and kicking. It is good, but you see, like my colleague said, Ghana is far, far bigger than our individual ambitions. Ghana is far greater than our individual collective sort of ambitions and dreams. We ought to sort of protect our lives. We ought to protect ourselves. And we ought to pray for these people and also their families. We ought also want to look into some of the things that lead to some of these accidents happening to uh, our nation and our people. Indeed, it is also worth noting that within the structures of uh, the country, the bureaucracy levels in terms of even people procuring uh, certain documentation in terms of building permits and all that is, is quite uh, hectic. So you have a good number of uh, buildings without building permits or the right sort of documentation that will sort of legalize their operations and all that. And uh, indeed, as we are going forward, we ought to look at ar ar architecture works and all that and also look at the kind of people that we employed into our construction site and people who we, 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 we engage as architects and other sort of technical people to look into buildings and other structures that we put up. It is better saving our investment, it's better keeping the lives safe, it is better protecting ourselves. You know, we, we MPP like uh, as a, a very good party and also strong people, a family like like everybody know to be. Then Akufad has cut short, it's also his trip in the Bota region is coming back to Accra to also help. Uh, in the afternoon we have uh, run, running with Dr. Baomia also visiting the scene with uh, the, the party chairman, Jacob Chibilamke. And the uh, well-meaning Ghanaians also participated and also partook in the, the rescue exercise. We are happy that at least a team is there trying to help solve the problem. And we've been also told that uh, a Israeli team has also been sent to sort of come and help. And also there are a good number of our neighbors who are also ready to sort of offer their level of assistance to help uh, rescue the situation. We are happy and we're also praying for the lives and the family of these people. And we pray that in moving forward, we'll be able to sort of look into some of these things and uh, make corrections ne when need be. Okay. All we can say at this moment is that may the good Lord 
bless and keep the souls of those that have departed from us. They that are still in the hospitals, they that are hurt and injured, may he offer them some comfort. Again, um, another very great member of our party, the Honorable His Excellency, sorry, Elijah Liu Mahama, you know, there has been a lot of media talk about him and his illness. And so if you'll permit me, I'll take just a minute to read a rejoinder that has come from the office of Elijah Liu Mahama. It's dated the 7th of November, 2012. And the headline is Rejoinder H. His Excellency Ali Muhammad rushed to Kolebu Teaching Hospital. It has come to the notice of the office of the former president, His Excellency Alaji Ali Muhammad, and his family that there are rumors in the media and on the internet that His Excellency Alaji Ali Muhammad was rushed to the hospital yesterday, the 6th of November 2012. We would want to advise Ghanaians to ignore any such speculation in that regard. The family would like to state on record that His Excellency Alaji Ali Muhammad went to hospital on Saturday the 3rd of November himself and was not rushed to the Kolebu Teaching Hospital on the 6th of November as some media houses have reported. We would like to inform the general public that His Excellency is fine by God's grace and currently doing very well. Thank you all. Signed, Mr. Samuel Kojo Frimpong. Um, again, Honorable Asigui, what are your comments on these? Why the need for such unnecessary media speculation and rumor mongering about the health of uh, His Excellency Elijah Ali Muhammad? Well, um, I think that um, we must indicate, you know, <coughs> excuse me, we must indicate that uh, when it comes to the issue of ill health, nobody is a respecter of that. I mean, we all fall sick, you know. Um, as we live as human beings, and this is something that is supposed to be part of us. But you see, when you have, you know, situations where um, the right information is not put out there, you are forced to also, you know, come in and then, you know, respond to some of these things, just like His Excellency's office has put out, you know, with regards to this statement. I was, you know, dumbfounded when about um, um, two weeks ago, or is yeah. it a week ago? Yeah, two weeks ago. When the Idil Fitro, yeah. Idil Adda, sorry, celebration yeah. was taking place, and our president addressing the Muslim gathering indicated that there was a need to pray for His Excellency Ali Muhammad because he was, he was on a uh, hospital bed. You know, I was, I was dumbfounded because on that said day, that particular Friday, I found myself in Tamale. And I knew, I, before I got to Tamale, I knew His Excellency was in Tamale for the festival. He apparently went to the Jubilee Park, which is popularly known as the police park in Tamale, mm -hmm. and prayed with some government officials. I was on board a flight with some government, uh, some ministers. Uh, the Minister of Communications, Harun Edrisu, the Deputy Minister of Energy, Inusa Fusaini, we even, you know, exchanged pleasantries and that kind of a thing. And moments later, we heard His Excellency, the, the President, indicating that the former Vice President had, had been hospitalized and there was a need to, to pray for him. You know, you cannot hide some of these things. After the prayers in Tamale, I'm talking of the other prayers, mm -hmm. His Excellency Ali Mama, who has made it a policy since we went into opposition, that any time he's in Tamale to either participate in either other or either federal, he goes to North Star Radio, which yeah. is his radio station, to, you know, give some goodwill messages out. And after the prayers that morning, he found himself at uh, North Star Radio, did the usual thing like he usually would do, and then after that threw a party in his house. It was in His Excellency Ali Muhammad's house. I went with two other colleagues I traveled, three other colleagues I traveled with, Hobson Adoye, John Kuma, and then Mustafa. You know, we all went to His Excellency's house at Kalpohini and at, joined with other people to have fun. Media men, I remember I was sitting next to him when the team from GBC came and they were bidding him farewell. When we were all talking about what had been put out there, the first thing that struck me as somebody who had worked at the presidency before was that for the president to come out and make statements of this nature, he needed to have been given some kind of a briefing. So I asked myself, where did His Excellency get the briefing to have come out to say that yeah. His Excellency, the former vice president, had been hospitalized. I think that that statement he made was quite a reckless one to have been made. You know, 
And since then, you've had this rumor that is going on. And yes. as we speak, it is even rumored that he's dead. Yeah. And I'm happy. When we got here and then we're told there's a statement that has been issued by his office, I was like, thank God we would have, we would have this statement read to the viewing public so that those who are calling and asking will have their hearts, you know, lie down in peace. Okay. So for me, I mean, it is not a strange thing for His Excellency, the former Vice President, to fall sick. We okay. all fall sick, you know, as we are human beings and we live. So it is not a strange thing to happen. And people who are wishing him dead, we are telling them that it is not true. And the statement, you know, okay. answers that, I mean, or declares the air with regards to the rumor that is going on. Okay. Richard, you know, some people have decided to cast all sorts of aspersions and read all sorts of meanings into this. That about two weeks ago, the president said Elijah Ali Muhammad was sick. It turned out he was not sick. And now he's actually sick. And people are beginning to read all sorts of meanings into this. How do you take this? You see, it is obvious that the rumor originated from the current president, President Mahama. And it's quite saddening to, to, to hear that a president will go about giving such sort of uh, rumors or making such uh, allegations in regarding the, the, the lives or the, the health of a, a person persons. who yeah. was walking about and doing his normal things. And indeed, it was also forgot by the media. And you see, I, I so sometimes I can't really sit back to look at the kind of security system or the network that we have within this country. Let me look at this option, this, this sort of issue from this perspective. Indeed, before a president goes out there to make pronouncements, he ought to be briefed by the security operatives or his team of security men. They have to, from BNI and all manner of individuals, including the national security coordinator, they need to give him those briefings, tell him what is happening within their country and everywhere. I'm not even surprised that the president is being allowed to go this way. We sat in this country. It took BBC to report that there were Ghanaians who have become refugees in Burkina Faso. When even the Togo. issue broke, Togo, Togo, Togo is very good. Togo, when the issue broke up, we were being told that uh, national security were rather disputing the numbers or the figures that have been put forward by BBC. A foreign media house put this issue to forward. And we have been, and they were rather going about, they are not refuting the fact that this were untrue, but they say, oh yeah, it is true. The, 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 the attention has been drawn to that. These are not flies or uh, what do you call it, uh, mosquitoes who can go unnoticed. These are human beings carrying their things and, and f f going away from this country. And yet these people were not noticed. They were not noticed. The problem is that we have a lot of people who dress and, and also drive fancy four cars parading on the street and calling themselves national security operatives and all that. And all what they are interested in announcing what they do and what they don't do. They don't really go about doing what they are expected to do. So I pray that the president will be briefed properly on some of these issues so that he will not get it wrong. But see, when it, it's such issues come from the, the mouth of a current president, it is terrible. Do you understand that? And so you, you give a lot of people the cause to sort of doubt other words that you put forward. Because you see, the more you, 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 you do some of these things, any words that you put forward, people will not trust you. The more you do more of such things, the more you lose the trust of the people of the Republic of Ghana. This has been a very unfortunate incident. Today as well has been a very sad day in the Republic of Ghana. We are, discuss we are going to move on to the major discussion for the day, and that is the IEA um, vice presidential debates that were held yesterday. As a brief introduction, you know, these were the, this was the first time actually, and the only time that the vice presidential candidates of the various political parties were supposed to meet the Ghanaian public and address the issues that were raised. Mr. Asigri, a lot has been said after the debate. How did you see the performance of the four of them? And I don't want us to zone in on anybody at this stage. Let's just look at the generality. Well, I, I can't see why you are trying to put me in a box. I mean, it is for us to make our submission. So if you are asking me to make an assessment of what it is as um, an interested party in what transpired yesterday, I would plead that uh, let me do it as such because uh, um, generally, uh, let me commend the IEA. I think that, like you said, it's probably the second one because the first one, our former vice, sorry, our vice presidential candidate participated in in 2008 with the other running mates. Except, um, I think His Excellency John Mahama participated. Yeah, he was in. All of them were in there at the time. Um, if you were in uh, Takrade at Akuma Plaza or you watched on TV yesterday, um, I made a statement on Monday on one other network that 
having followed, you know, um, what has gone on in the last few weeks with regards to the campaign, especially to do with the various running mates of the various political parties, zeroing it down to the two key ones, that is the NDC, NPP. Um, something happened when I had the privilege to travel with uh, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia to the Upper West region. He was billed to address the UDS World Campus on Saturday. Just as we were in the Upper West, the Vice President also came in and he happened to address them on Friday. In fact, we got a copy of um, the address he gave at the World Campus. And when I listened to it, I said to myself, well, if this is what he was here to do, we would wait and have our turn. And indeed, viewers, it is not because it is Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, that is why I want to put it this way. But anybody who was part of that program, students of our UDS campus would attest to the fact that the delivery of Dr. Mahmoud Baumia on that day, I mean, I saw him in a different light altogether. After the program, which I emceed, I walked to him and I said to him, I said, sir, you have put me in a situation where I have, I have I mean, I have lacked words to describe, you know, what you did. Because his message you could see from the students that they were absorbing it. And the message was couched for the students. All what he, had, he sought to put out there was about the economy. And I think that he responded to a few things that were said. And I know those ones were directed at his, at his person, where he was described as a textbook economist. I think that anybody, like I said, who was at Akuma Plaza in Takradi yesterday or watched on TV would now would be asking who we should be describing as the textbook economist. Because fortunately for him, that is Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, the topics that were put out there likely had to do with the economy. And I think that it is not for me as an MPP man to sit there and then overblow the situation. We have been told about the anger that is brewing in the camp of, you know, our uh, number one uh, compatriots in this game. And it is not for nothing that they have this problem with the vice president. Because for the issues to be put out there, then when a question is put about inflation, which, be, I mean, before Dr. Mahmoud Baumia's lecture, which he made Ghanaians understand that that single digit inflation we have been told, we've been, we've lived with, cannot be real. I mean, those of us who are entrepreneurs and are in the business sector, keep saying to ourselves, how can we have this kind of a situation and we can't see it reflecting in the business community? And it is that people who are in that community, especially in the manufacturing industry, are rather folding up. And these are real things. I can sit in and mention companies who have folded up in the manufacturing industry. And yet we're supposed, or we are supposed to be enjoying a single digit inflation. When you talk about these things, these are areas where those who find themselves in this category, manufacturing sector, entrepreneurs, business people, would see reflecting in their dealings. But, I mean, I think that yesterday, the cat, the cat was let out of the bag. When the question was put out there, Dr. Mahmoud Baumi again indicated that if we really are enjoying a real single-digit inflation, it should reflect in interest rates. It should reflect in our exchange rates. Yet, we are not seeing these things happen. When it got to the vice president's turn, who some few weeks ago was the governor of the Bank of Ghana, and today the head of the economic management team, per their own structures, NDC, telling us that, yes, it is true. This was how he said it. He admitted it. I'm not quoting verbatim, but he said, yes, it is true. That when you have a single-digit inflation, it should reflect on the exchange rates, the interest rates, and the related areas. But that's... The reason why we are not seeing this reflect in the interest rate area is because of some noises in the air which has made banks or bankers feel that these figures are not real. To quote for him, one, Bertram, he said, confused. We are confused. Hmm. For one, for once, what dawned on me when he made those pronouncements was that I said to myself, we are not looking at a single digit inflation that came into the system and lasted for about just six months. We are told it's been there for how many months? 28 months. Yes, 28 months or so. 
So if we've had a single digit inflation economy running all this period, and it is that some noises has been made, and it has not put confidence in the banking sector that over six months, over eight months, over a year, the banking sector have not come to accept and admit that single digit inflation is really a real situation. And for that matter, let's make it reflect on the exchange rate. And again, you have the Monetary Policy Committee coming out with the prime rate every now and then reviewing it. And we're not seeing the banks also reviewing their, their exchange rates. I, I, I find it quite intriguing. And I'm not surprised. I am not surprised one bit. That's at the point in time, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia indicated. And I want to read, I want to just give that quote just as he said it. And then end, end from there. I see you are giving me time to, to wind up. Why he talked about <laughs> that situation where he said, if your wife comes home, and I'm quoting, if your wife comes home from the market to tell you that, to tell you prices of items have gone up, and you tell her, and you tell her she is confused because inflation is at single digits, then there is a serious problem. Unquote. I think that Dr. Mahmoud Baumia answered it all. If we are told that noises are the reasons why we can't have exchange rate coming now, then we have a serious problem. And those who are managing our economy should sit up and tell us what the real situation is with regards to this so-called single-digit inflation, which we have had them tout even up to this evening where I had the, government, the finance minister touting and still telling us that we are enjoying a single-digit inflation at a 9 point something percent. They should tell us what exactly is happening that we cannot see this reflect on the real issues on the ground. Okay. Richard, is uh, your wife complaining about single digit inflation or she's talking about double digit inflation uh, in the marketplace? I'm sure she's seen more, uh, she's seen more real things than the uh, vice presidential candidate uh, who happens to be the vice president of the land is seeing. And she's seen more than what uh, the finance minister is seeing because she goes to the real market and she sees the, uh, the price of goods and services escalating every single day that she goes to the market. And it is not moving in single digits, but triple degrees and all that. You see, yesterday, performance of the, uh, uh, the Mr. Emisata, His Excellency, it, it looks as if <coughs> it, it appears like somebody who has lost his pinion on the desert. So when you're at the desert and you, you, you happen to lose your pin, you become more confused and you try to pick anything that you hands, lay hands on. Do you understand that? And that is exactly what it appeared yesterday. The, 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 the man was confused right from the word go. Indeed, it is obvious that when he was even asked to sort of give ways to sort of reduce the housing deficit, he was talking about erosion. Uh, you can't be more confused than, to, than that. It, it, it depicted and he exhibited it through and through from his gestures and all that. Every, nothing was working for him. Indeed, let's look at this, some of the answers and the, the solution that he professed to the good people of this nation. We realize that if indeed this man was the one who was in charge of the Bank of Ghana, who was the governor of the Bank of Ghana, that is, there's no, uh, some of us had no difficulty believing why the, uh, the, the city had depreciated to this, this extent. Because, you see, the man did not even understand the basic economic principles of life, he didn't understand it. Those are elementary principles that you expect that every first year economic student would ought to be sort of aware of. And realizing that somebody who rose from the ranks, from deputy finance minister to governor and all those sort of things, still looking at the way and manner he conducted himself, the way he lost confidence, the way he lost that sort of uh, the, the finesse to sort of articulate himself, the way he lost that sort of <laughs> energy that people were expecting our leaders to sort of, because he, we want leaders who can motivate. One yes, leaders who can move the nation forward through the way and manner they even their conduct. So let me come to these inflationary issues. I, I was just going to, you know, p poke something little into the into the whole discussion. I can see the tangent you're on. When he was asked the question about the ports of Ghana, he said he's never been to court. Mm -hmm. it, 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 that, is, that is even to the icing of the case, suggesting how confused the, 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 His Excellency, the Vice President, was. You see, let, let me look at this issue. Indeed, there are various economic indicators. Those indicators can never be taken for granted in any way, in any country that you go to. Those things work in tandem. They work together. You can't just pick them and let them move apart. One, inflation, cost of living, interest rate, 
Do you understand that? These are basic economic principles that ought to move together. You cannot have a single digit inflation and see where the exchange rate is off the roof, where the, the, the city has completely lost its value. Do you understand that? You cannot have a single digit inflation where cost of living is off the roof. You cannot have single digit in inflation when interest rates are high. Because you see, what happens is that banks are charging so high that the business community cannot access credit of uh, uh, loans and order to uh, expand their businesses. If they are not expanding their businesses, it therefore means that people cannot get jobs. So it means we have a country growing a, a jobless economy. Do you understand that? That is what is happening. But you see, I, I'm not so, so surprised about what was happening yesterday at the event. When you have a set of individuals, a deputy finance minister who are telling himself the, 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 the best propaganda person the world has ever seen, going about spinning all manner of lies, instead of concentrating on things that will transform the economy. When you have a finance minister who misses his business forming a cartel with a DCPOP, a Yabwa Tinjan, and all what they are interested in, trying to sort of put up a team together, going about creating mayhem, you understand that? These people who are chancing upon our money, milking the nation dry, all in the name of trying to put up together a team that will be going about creating confusion and trying to sort of portray that those confusion were caused by MPP and the lies. This is what will happen to the economy. Because you see, these are people who do not even understand basic economy. Because if they understand the economics, you will not pick money like 50 uh, billion, 500 billion in excess and pay one person and let one come back to tell Ghanaians that uh, these monies were paid because the person came and defrauded us. Then how can we live as a country? When you have such people live money in the affairs of this country. And indeed, it's interesting to know that the year Wyoming was alleged to have dropped or duped or, 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 or defrauded, defrauded the nation was the year that this nation was under red alert, being replaced by the president. So if you are under red alert and such a things are happening, then indeed when you go under green alert, I'm sure the whole country will be swallowed by these sort of people who are much more hungrier than the, the, the good people of this nation. If I was there yesterday, there was a question I would have loved to put to um, His Excellency, Ms. Arthur, and it is this, I'm quoting from page no, 31. To no. page 31, uh, I'm quoting from page 31, sorry, okay, of the manifesto. NDC manifesto 2008. Mm -hmm. And this is what it says, that NPP had depreciated the Ghanaian CD from 6,800 in the to a dollar in the year 2000 to 10,700 in the year 2008. If because of this they were able to campaign that the NPP government should be kicked out of office, you have been in government for just three and a half years. The CD has depreciated from 10,700 to about 10,700 to about 19,000 using the old Ghana CDs, or from one CD. One CD 10 pesos to about one CD 90 pesos in just three and a half years. If we were to be voted out for that track record, how about yours? The key word is integrity. Let me start with you, Richard. Um, education. Education. This has become a very, very key issue in this campaign. I have seen that a host of the NDC's adverts are against, targeted specifically at our free SHS policy. What do you think of that? It is beginning to look as though they have no policy for us. They, indeed, they do not have any policy for the good people of this nation. And beyond that, my brother, I've, I've, I've crisscrossed the nation, I've, I've traveled across the country. And you see, whenever you will go to places like Brongahafo, Volta region, uh, Shanti region, Western region, and all those places, there's one thing that goes on in the lives of the people. They repeatedly talk about the fact that gradually the president is gaining notoriety as the, 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 the hater of the poor. Indeed, he's beginning to sort of gain that popularity. That is the man who hates poor people. He's the man who, this is the man who doesn't care about the, 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 the poor, the needy. This is the man who doesn't really care about anybody but just himself and the few cronies around him. But let me just digest this issue this way. Number one, as we speak now, we have ministers of this nation who do not pay light bills. They get free fuel, free cars, free accommodation. They indeed get their pay. At the moment, as you have been told, even deputy ministers are working home in with eight out that's eight, 80 million old Ghana cities. 80 million. So at least the people in my hometown, break home, would understand and appreciate the figures. These are the chunks of money these people have been taking on a monthly basis. And this is even supposed to be backdated to 2009. 
for these people to take all this chunk of money for themselves. These people who are ministers and who are leaders of this nation, who are supposed to serve, rather, but are rather being served by the people of this nation, they are rather growing fat at the expense of the people who pay their taxes, and those taxes are being used in taking care of them. See, these are the people who are telling us that we, the ordinary people, do not deserve to have a quality free education. Let me tell you something. President Mahama is a product of free education. He enjoyed free education 40 years ago, but he's never proud to talk about it. But he said it in his book, the, his first coup d'etat. He talked about the fact that free education was what benefited his other siblings, there about 14 of them. He, he all enjoyed specifically free that he used to even get sundowns for sundowns free. for free. As we speak on the IEA yesterday, we are all aware of Dr. Maomi also making it clear to Ghanaians that he is also a proud beneficiary of this sort of policy. We are, uh, my, my, my brother here, Mayor, happens to be also a beneficiary of free education. We, we, we have all these people, including Hasa Ayariga, Abu Sakara, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, all manner of individuals, including uh, the other deputy ministers, uh, Abang Babin and all those individuals, enjoying free education from the north. It is imperative to know that as we speak, these are the team of people who are gagging against this policy that will redeem the good good of this nation from sort of the economic diagram they find themselves in. These are the same sort of people who are fighting against this policy. These are people who do not even have any alternatives for the people of this. But it's quite laughable when you listen to and watch some of the adverts that, that, uh, that have been played by these NDC people. They go about to the, the, to the, uh, uh, the coastline, uh, Accra here gather some a few guns and put them together and they tell them to say that they don't want free education. But you see, I was expecting them to put a team like the president, the, 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 uh, the, his, his vice, put together uh, 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 Abu Sakara, Dr. Baumia, and all these individuals who enjoy free education and let them say that the education they enjoy was not quality because it was free. For me, I would each day I, I accept to go to school for free. Do you understand that? Because what has happened is that the freeness of the, uh, the, the policy translates to the fact that the natural resource of this nation is being shared equitably for everybody to enjoy. Because okay. as we speak, the full world and the, the, all the natural resources, gold and other things that we have, there's no way that it can be shared among us. But the only way that all of us can enjoy the benefit, and the only way that the people who have been paying taxes each day can enjoy from their toys, is for them to also enjoy this free quality education that Nana Kufa is promising. You see, let me just make this last point. For me, I would say I enjoyed some level of free education, not because I come from the north. I went to Brickham Children's School. I had, uh, enjoyed it because I had government scholarship. Because during those times, this government scholarship was be, uh, exams was being organized for students. If you come up top, you are giving scholarship and all that. I enjoyed it. It helped my parents and those money that was supposed to spend on me. My my father extended those sort of benefits to my other siblings who enjoyed it. So why are we trying to deny the good people of this nation some of these things instead of trying to preach that let's find a way to transform the lives of the people? Was we for us in the MPP? We believe that the only way forward for us as a people is to educate the populace. Let's transform their lives. Because if it hadn't been for education, I'm not sure I'll be sitting here talking, talking to the good people of this nation. Okay. Maybe I'll be somewhere drinking something. Do you understand that? <laughs> that is how serious the situation could be. Mm -hmm. Then look at our brothers who are always on the street trying to find, uh, make ends meet. They are there because they could not go for intensive education. So for us to move forward, we need to vote NDC out. We need to vote this visionless, incompetent administration out of office. If not, they will rather sort of go out with a, uh, the, uh, milking the nation dry to the extent that any government that comes back in the nearby future cannot have anything but to sort of collapse this country entirely. Okay. You spoke about an advert of the NDC where they had a couple of people on the beach talking about free education and how impossible it was. It will interest you to know that one of the people they use in that advert has 12 children and none of them is in school because he cannot afford it. Perhaps he's competing with the president, with the 14. You understand? Kids. You understand that? <laughs> and indeed, for us as a party, we appreciate that if you want to do things for this country, mm. do things that would impact on their lives. 
it is better for us to do free education than go about giving teachers and giving one one Ghana to the okay. people. It is Honorable better Asigui. to offer people Richard, free education. If you hold on for me, Honorable Asigui, we have just about three minutes. I want you to deal with the Cuban Three minutes. Issue. I, I will give you a little bit more time, well, but <coughs> let's deal with the Cuban issue. For me, tying it, it's about education. I think that's why you're bringing it up. Yeah. So for me, if you take the issue and the argument and listen to the adverts of the NDC like you're playing, and you see, for me, I get so worried. That group that has emerged from within the NDC calling itself something, something class for education. You see, the jingle, I mean, the song they're using, that is a national song. If they think that they want to shoot the NPP's free education policy down. They should stop this type of a game. There's another video they have done talking about security and who would create problems in the upcoming election, where they're going to take photographs, the videos of the war in Liberia, the war in Sierra Leone, Afghanistan, and other places and put together. Again, you have some funny group behind that whole thing. Well, NBC, when they turn around and say, we are desperate, we keep wondering that if you see these activities, who you would want to call a desperate, desperate person who wants to hang on to power. It's interesting Coming. because they are cowards. Absolutely. The point I'm making here is this. My brother has talked about who were beneficiaries and all that. I have said here, I am a proud beneficiary. Even though I didn't have my secondary education up more. My father was capable of paying, paying my fees, but because it was a right, he applied to the scholarship secretariat and I benefited from modern scholarship when I schooled in Obasi Sektek. So it is not something that I would sit and want to gloss over this type of a situation and say that it is not possible. Let the Dalton Thomases continue to think this way. It is not surprising that when you hear the NDC say it is not possible, because I have here in my hand a document about the Cuban medical, I mean the Ghanaian students who, 250 Ghanaian students who were sent to Cuba to study medicine and other health-related courses. This is a document that was published on the Cuban embassy website. And it is stated here, and I just want to read that paragraph. The paragraph that is talking about, under the agreement, the Cuban government would provide scholarship for all the 220, 250 students who were selected from deprived communities throughout the country and would be ready to come back and serve their communities on completion. To start hmm. with, that selection was not even true that they were selected from deprived communities. But let me stick to my, my issue. This is a government, that is the Cuban government, offering a scholarship. Free. Because the definition of scholarship is indicated that it is to give somebody the ability to go to school where it will be catered for by some source. So free. After they were given this scholarship, then we had Ghana government coming out to cook and concoct memos, cabinet memos. This is a memo, cabinet memo, signed by Minister Yelichre when he was Minister of Health. I just want the cameras to pick this so the viewers will see that Asigri is not sitting here and then putting out a document that is not real. Please, viewers, read this Can document. Can you show us the signature no, of the, the name. This is a document. It's stated up there secret, but we have these documents. Yeah. Show us the signature of Yelichre, just for authentication purposes. I would again show it to the cameras before I make my case. The signature of your lecture, and the camera could zoom and then show it to viewers. Yeah. Let me put it right. Joseph Yelechre, that is the MP, Minister of Health. They see the date, 18th August 2011. After Cuban government indicated that they were given this scholarship to pay fees for students to go and study medicine and come back and serve this country, which was even done not in its right sense. We have government again with another document. This one is a document asking for the release of funds and signed by Martin Newman. This is an Office of the President document. And I'm going to read the portion that will, be interest, will, will interest viewers. Here, you have it stated here. It is to be noted that the total amount involved for the training of the 250 medical students over a six-year period under the new medical cooperation agreement between the government of Ghana and Cuba. And viewers, take your pens and papers, pencil and papers, and note it down. It's 
and 80 Ghana cities. Again, it is here. Mr. Cameraman, I beg you, because we've had people say that Nanado lied. We just want to put the records and set it straight. I won't sit here and be privileged to a document that I'll read and viewers can get the opportunity to also know what is in there. So viewers, if Asigri has quoted anything that is not right, check it. Check it. And that is the doc that part. This part where you have the 79. Show it well and then you see. Now, you have this to be as many as that is supposed to be paid for the, the, the stay, tuition, and everything of these students. We had the vice pre the, the, the president at the IEA debate in Tamale, indicating that the amount involved is 5,000. I guess you are doing the competition, right? Yeah, I am. Good. In Ghana City STEM, every student, what we are supposed to spend, when Cuban government has already given a scholarship, on each student for the six years, is supposed to be 319,000, yeah. all right? Yeah. Viewers who have taken the figures, let me call the figures again, so that viewers will do the calculation by themselves. 79 million, that is 79905180. Million, 180 Ghana cities. That you have a government after we are giving scholarship, spending this hooping amount on each student. The question we ask is. Who has this money been paid to? Because I don't believe, for once, the Ghana government has any money to pay for the studies and stay of these our brothers and sisters who has been sent to Cuba. Okay. So, so you this have, amount that has been said, if you put it in dollar terms, if you convert it, at the time they paid these monies, the dollar was, the city to dollar was one, one, uh, one city 30 pesos. That is 1.30. If you do the computation, it is again $245,000. Yes. So we are spending two hundred and forty-five thousand dollars on each student for the six years that they are going to be Mr. staying. Mr. What is interesting? I mean, what is interesting in this is that the president quoted mm -hmm. a figure of five thousand dollars for the training of each of these students per year in, in in Cuba. Now, when you do the computations, even based on the eighty million that you gave us, not the one hundred and sixty million that you gave us, yeah. it comes down to twenty-six thousand six hundred and fifty. Yeah. In excess of more than twenty-one thousand yeah. dollars. Mr. President. Very interesting exposés that I've gone on this evening. I'm pretty sure that you're itching to join the discussion. And so you can join us now on 0302-211-70124. And I'll repeat the numbers. 0302-211-70124. And the text lines, as you've already known, are 1760. I'll repeat all networks. 1760. We've been doing some very, very interesting calculations in the studios now. And you realize that as per the figure of 5,000 that the president gave at the IEA, it means that there's an excess of 433 million Ghana, sorry, 433 million old Ghana cities per student that is, has been paid or the president claims has been paid. So that's in Chobo. You know the local balance, we have what you call Chobo, as in when you are sent to go and buy something and you take some this and so that is the trouble that came as a result of this sort yes, of we human. can call we can call this one trouble. this is pure robbery no no this one cannot they be called like robbery. this we're talking about the taxpayers money okay. and it is not about just maybe a thousand a be. thousand or a million i mean this is huge colossal amount i mean but you after paying dubious judgment debt you still put your hands in your kitty and steal our money spend it with impunity okay. and you have the guts to come and tell people that nobody Free SS cannot be possible. When the president was talking about 5,000 and it was indicated that it was, slip, it was a slip, check here. There are air fares alone, ticket. You see, air ticket to Cuba, an initial settlement allowance for 250 students. Again, viewers, the amount involved is 1.9 million 570,000. I mean, I get confused. Let me give the figures again 1.957. Five zero zero. So that's one point nine million. You are a businessman. Yeah, yeah. Give me the quotation. One point nine million. One point nine million five hundred and seventy-five thousand five hundred. This is the amount. And if you divide that by two hundred and fifty students, each person is supposed to be taking seven thousand eight hundred and thirty. Okay. What type of ticket? Even if they were to be five business. We have, business we have Ibrahim from Boko on the line. Let me take him and then we'll come back to the studios. Oh, I think we lost Ibrahim from Boko. I, I think uh, that's Richard, another yes. important point that needs to be made. This amount that were chopped by our leaders in the name of wanting to educate some people of this country. 
what we have to appreciate is that if these money were to be spent in Ghana educating these people, we could have educated over, over 883. It is not about even spending 883 money here. people it, it, as um, doctors in Ghana. Richard. Instead of spending that amount, and these monies were even completely chopped by our leaders. Richard, Richard I am looking at if, even in. if they had put this money into our medical schools, yeah. I think that the improvement would have been such that our medical schools could even admit a thousand students. The so that if you have tech, obviously been if, you have, if, you, if you have tech, SMS, School of Medical Science this year, have been about 300 people on their list and they could only admit about 100. It tells you that we have a problem as a people in this country. So let nobody sit somewhere and think that propaganda would make the way. These are official documents we are showing out to the good voters of this and country. See, hold on, hold on. We have, we have Ben from Garrett and Pani. Ben, good evening. Yeah, good evening. My brother, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay, you have the floor. Yeah. I want to add about the... Uh, ben, PSA can you please lower the, the, the volume on your TV set? My name is Sule, it's not Ben. Okay, Sule. Yes. Let's go. I want to add about the free SSS. Yes, sir. Yeah. As for me, I want to test if it cannot be possible for free SSS. Because they are free, man. Because we need our children to be quality than this. Yes. Thank, thank you very much. Um, we have Suleimana from Tamale. Good evening, my brother. How are you? Hello? Okay. You think that there's... Um, Sule, let me just answer. Sule from my district, if he's watching, he says he, he doesn't believe it to be possible. We are saying that. And let that be your last comment. Yes, we are saying that. Monies that were paid to Wyoming alone will build 1,500 schools. Monies that are dubious monies that have been paid... It, this has not even been paid to the students who have gone to, who have been taken to Cuba to, to study. Because the Cuban government says that they have granted Ghana government a scholarship for 250 students. We will retrieve these monies and put it in the free SHS and make it possible. Mm -hmm. So it shouldn't be a doubt in Thomas. You see, it is also important to know that as we speak, building of six unit classroom blocks, that was costing 800 million in 2009. As we speak, the same set of Six unit class uh, room blocks is costing one point uh, four point two billion Ghana cities. This is how dubious these people can be. See, if we are building structures like that, the amount spent on one six unit classroom block at the moment could equally give us three or four of such six unit classroom blocks. So we need to vote out NDC and President Mahama administration because if we allow them, even a single day after January uh, December seventh, I'm, I'm sure these people would just. Uh, collapse this country. We live in a country today where it has become the norm that Yebe DKK and Chopping for You have taken over this country. Come December 7th, I would vote for Nana Dodanko Akufado on the basis that I believe in Ghana. What about you? Good evening.